This is your girl Wakeji Kamore and welcome to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. <laughs> Are currently going through the book of first Samuel and we are doing this chapter by chapter so it would be nice for you to listen to the end because the lessons from the chapter which we'll be reading today will be at the end of this recording also if you're new here please subscribe to this channel and click to the notification bell so that you never miss any new recording or new video if you're a returning listener may the lord reward your commitment we are in first Samuel chapter 2 which I will be reading from the NLT version with the key lesson shared at the end. So kindly follow through. So in the first chapter, we, we encounter a man called Elkanah. He has two wives, Hannah and Penina. Penina has children. Hannah does not have children. And then Hannah goes to the Lord, prays and pours her heart out to the Lord. And the Lord blesses her with a child called Samuel. And the last, at the end of, um, at the, end of the chapter, we actually, it ended with, Hannah fulfilling the promise that she had made because she'd made the promise that if God gave her a son, she would in return give the son back to the Lord. And that meant that she went and, I mean, I mean, gave them practically, like intentionally, literally, all of those, gave the son back to the Lord by leaving him at the temple to serve at the temple. So that's the end. That's where chapter one ended. Hannah actually went and gave Samuel to the priest who was, his name was Eli, and she left the boy there so in chapter two i'm not going to be reading the whole of it I'm, I'm going to skip some verses i'm going to skip from verse one to verse 11 but i'm going to tell you what it's about the first 11 verses of the chapter are a praise song to god this song was sung by hannah after she con conceived the baby boy some parts of that song i would actually really advise you to read it some part of that song are praise some parts of it are criticism of other people. It's like she's saying, Nyef, Nyef, I got a child. Who's laughing now? <laughs> Exponential potential. Like she's just over there telling, telling, she's basically almost telling off Penina in that praise song. It is a clear indication that even though that she was a spiritual woman, that she was still human. And her human part is seen in the way that she gloats and the way she criticizes her enemy. And this, and this is, like we can assume this was being done specifically to Penina. One of the things that that first verse, like from the verse 11 to verse 1 to 11 reminds me is that I don't have to be all polished in, the, in my time with God. That I can come to God, I can sing praises to him and he can also handle my not so good thoughts, my not so good words. He has seen it all, he has had it all and even he knows my thoughts even before I speak them. So even if I'm not gloating and I'm gloating in my thoughts and I'm gloating in my, in my mind, God already knows. And I don't have to completely be all like polished before I can come and speak, speak to the Lord. Because it is through the pouring of my, myself that the Holy Spirit will correct my thoughts. It is, a, it is through the outpouring of myself that he will correct my motives and my intentions. If you know how to talk, then you know how to pray. If you know how to talk, then you know how to even praise. Because praise and prayer doesn't need to be polished out. It just needs to be an outpouring of our hearts to the Lord. Alright, so I'm going to read now the next part, which is verse 12, all the way to verse 36. And it is titled, the first part is titled, Eli's Wicked Sons. So Eli is a priest at this time. He's the high priest in, the, in this season. And he has two sons that are wicked to the wickedness. <laughs> All right, so let me read it. It says, Now the sons of Eli were scoundrels who had no respect for the Lord, all for the duties as priests. Whenever anyone offered a sacrifice, Eli's sons would send over a servant with a three pronged pork, fork. Sorry, of <laughs> Kiriatunyama. Fork, <laughs> not pork. While the meat of the sacrificed animals was still boiling, the servant would stick the fork into the pot and demand that whatever is brought up be given to Eli's sons. All the Israelites who came to worship at Shiloh would be, were treated this way. Sometimes the servants would come even before the animal fat has been burned on the altar. And he would demand raw meat before it has been boiled so it can be used for roasting. 
So how these sacrifices were being done is that when the goat was slaughtered, the fatty parts were supposed to be sacrifices to the Lord. It was actually supposed to be burnt and be sacrifices to the Lord. And then some of it was given to the priest. But now these guys, these two sons that were wicked, used to come and say, this is po kwenye kuna tumafuta, so that they can go and roast it. They were not even waiting for it to be boiled. They were just going to, they were like, ah, we want this part and we want to go and roast it. They were lovers of Choma, but now they didn't have any regard for, for the sacrifices and how it was supposed to be done. The men offering the sacrifices might reply, take as much as you want, but the fat must be burnt first. Then the servant would demand, no, give it to me now or I will take it by force. So the sins of these young men were very serious in the Lord's sight. For they treated the Lord's offering with contempt. But Samuel, though he was the only boy, he was he was only a boy. You remember Samuel, the son of Hannah, who has been given into that, who has been dedicated to the temple to serve there. So at this point, he's only a boy, and he served the Lord. He wore a linen garment like, like that of a priest, and each year his mother would make a small coat for him and bring it to him when she came with her husband for the sacrifice. Before they returned home, Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord give you other children to take place of this one that she, that she gave to the Lord. And the Lord blessed Hannah, and she conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Now, Eli was very old, but he was aware of what his sons were doing to the people of Israel. He knew, for instance, that his son was seducing the young women who assisted at the entrance of the tabernacle. Eli said to them, I've been hearing reports from all the people about the wicked things you are doing. Why do you keep sinning? You must stop, my sons. The reports I hear among the Lord's people are not good. If someone sins against other, another person, God can mediate for the guilty party. But if someone sins against God, who can intercede? But Eli's sons wouldn't listen to their father, for the Lord was already planning to put them to death. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew taller and grew in favor with the Lord and with the people. All right, the next, first, the next uh, part is uh, titled, A Warning for Eli's Family. One day, a man of God came to Eli and gave him this message from the Lord. I revealed myself to your ancestors when they were at Pharaoh's, they were Pharaoh's slave in Egypt. I chose your ancestors, Aaron, ancestor Aaron, from among all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer sacrifice on my altar to burn incense and to wear the priestly vest as he served me. And I assigned the sacrificial offering to you, priest. So why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering? Why do you give your sons more honor than you give me? For you and, for you and they have become fat from the best offering of my people Israel. Therefore, the Lord, your, the God of Israel says, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi would always be priests, but I will honor those who honor me and I will despise those who think lightly of me. The time is coming when I put an end to your family and it will, be, it will no longer serve as my priests. All the members of your family will die before their time. No one will reach old age. You will watch with envy as I pour out prosperity on the people of Israel. But no member of your family will ever live out their days. The few not cut off from, the serving, from serving at my altar will survive, but only to, so their eyes can go blind and their hearts break and their children will die a violent death. And to prove that what I have said will come true, I will cause your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, to die on the same day. Then I will raise up a faithful priest who will serve me and do what I desire. I will establish his family and there will be priests to my anointed kings forever. Then all of your surviving family will bow before him, begging for money and food. Please, they will say, give us jobs among the priests so that we will have enough to eat. So that's the other part of uh, of Eli of First Samuel chapter two, and one of the things that I see in this chapter is Eli the priest had two sons. His name is Hophni and Phinehas, and these sons were what the Bible calls scoundrels, greedy idiots. 
<laughs> this undisciplined son enjoyed taking more than their share of the sacrifices and sleeping around with women that served in the tabernacle. This is so relatable, let me tell you guys. I have seen quite a number of PK, pastor's kids, <laughs> PK, pastor's kids, being quite problematic. But even sad is how, how weightless Ellie's attempt to correct them was. Like, the guy's attempt to correct them was so weightless. It was all so lame. It's like, there's no, there's no repercussion. It's just like, mutakubali, like, stop, oh no. You know, it was without any reprimand. It, is it possible that Ellie was a priest who failed to be a father? Is it also possible that there are pastors or priests or people who serve in churches who have failed as, who has failed in their role as parents? That is just something to think about. Question. It is also sad that you can be a high priest and still have children that are so undisciplined that it is possible to be in church and not know God. So close to God, yet so far. So close to the Savior, yet so lost in sin. It, it is my prayer. I'm not even going to challenge you guys. Today I'm just praying for you guys. I am just praying that this will never be the story, your story or the story of your children. That this story of, you know, kids being so close to God yet so far, being so close to the Savior yet so lost in their sin, will never be the, your portion and it will never be the portion of your children. That is the prayer that I'm leaving with you guys today. This is your girl, Wakeji Kamore, and this has been Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. See you tomorrow. <laughs>